All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be working on this 2015 Volkswagen Jetta. And we're going to be swapping the engine out of it. I already got a new, well, used one. The problem with this one is the check engine light's on. The customer had me diagnose it, and it's the cam sensor. I'll go ahead and start pulling this off so I can show you where that's at. But anyways, I told him that this car has 186,000 miles. I told him he'd be, if he's going to do the cam system, might as well do the timing belt and water pump and all that. But it's also got blow-by, which means your the compression is blowing past the piston rings or the oil is coming up past the piston rings, one of the two. So I told me better off just getting a used engine. Got a really good deal on that one over there. It's got 56,000 miles on it. All right, so your cam sensor is this connector right here, right in front of your timing cover, or the little bracket to pull the engine. And then it goes right behind your cam gear, this metal plate back here. That's what gives you your signal. It's got a, if you look right there, there's a gap back there that passes through that sensor and that's what gives you your reading. So that sensor is going bad. So we're going to go ahead and replace the engine. Now we could just do the timing belt on it and the sensor, but he goes I changed the oil last time for him. It was about six months ago, and he drove 30,000 miles on one oil change. So he definitely don't take care of his vehicle. But we got this one right here. It was $800, I think. That's shipped to me and a two-year warranty on it. So, couldn't really pass that up. The time we get the timing belt, water pump, tensioner, the cam sensor, then coolant, oil. I mean, we'd be working our way up to a, the price of this engine. So, that's what we're going to do today is start unhooking everything and getting this engine ready to be pulled. I went ahead and jacked it up. Then I took the splash shield off the bottom, which there's these little torque screws right here. There's eight of those. And they go along the edges of it, four on each side. Then I drain the oil out of it. I then hop down here and show you what's going on. Drain the oil. Remove the cover that covered all this up. Now what I'm gonna do is get the power steering drained. I'm just gonna take this hose off here and let it drain. Unbolt the pump. Then we'll try to save the AC. I don't want to drain it. So I want to just try to unbolt the compressor and pull it forward. Now normally when I do an engine, I pull the transmission too, but really there's a lot of room down here. Along with up top. I think... There'll be plenty of room to separate them and get it out. It's just going to be me doing it, so. Might not be difficult, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and do the everything underneath first. So that's why I can lower it back down. 
Uh, I don't really. Looks about like everything. Just the AC compressor and the power steering pump. This mount right here is bolted to the transmission, so it can stay. I'll probably have to pull the starter. Which is right. Right there. Gonna have to pull that so I can get the bolts out of the torque converter. I'll show you on this engine real quick. So, there's six of those. Well, maybe you don't pull the starter. Looks like there's a little inspection hole back here to get to your torque converter bolts. All right, so right now I'm on the I'm underneath the car, back side of the engine. There's a black rubber plug right there, or plastic. I don't know. I haven't touched it yet. It's right above the axle. So it looks like you just pop that out of there and then unbolt the torque converter. Seems pretty simple. And I also have to get the four exhaust bolts out. They're right there on the flange. Hopefully they come off. Probably not breaking, but that's alright. There's another manifold over there. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps everything up down here. I've never pulled an engine out of one of these, but so far it don't look terrible to do. I'll of course remove the alternator, get it out of the way. Then after the I think if I take the belt tensioner off, which is this, and that engine mount, I'll have plenty of room to separate the engine and transmission. It's the plan anyway. So up here I gotta undo all the hoses of course. There's a couple of them. Then all the wiring. Some cars have a one master connector. So all your wires run into one big connector normally. It's on the one side of your engine bay. But I don't see one on this one. That's okay, we'll just unplug everything. Now it's very important when you take your bolts out to keep them around the area where they go or put them back in the hole. I do that so I don't have any bolts left over. Sometimes you still do for some reason, but most generally it helps a lot. All right, before you get started, I want to hook the battery. I should probably go ahead and do that actually. <laughs> this way you don't short anything out or anything like that. Just safer that way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything underneath knocked out. Gotta drain the coolant still too. If you take your cap off, it'll drain a little faster underneath. I didn't see no drain plug on the radiator, so I'm just gonna take the lower radiator hose off. It'll do just fine. I might just take it off the engine here because I'm going to put it on the other engine. Alright, so I'm going to get to all this. I'll shoot some clips of taking stuff off and fast forward through it all for you guys so you ain't got to be in real time.
Alright guys, I already ran into one problem. This is a power steering pulley. See these bolts here? I don't have the socket for those. I'm pretty sure those are called triple square sockets. They're not quite a Torx. They got more points to them than a Torx do. So, there's a <laughs> bolt behind it. Right there. So I'm going to try to use a wrench and see if I can back it out far enough to get it out. I really doubt it. A lot of pulleys have a hole where you can go through here to get to them. But this one you can't. So I'm going to go ahead and try to spin that out with a wrench and see how that goes. Alright, so I got the bolt pretty well all the way out. But it's hitting, I can't take it out anymore. So, I don't know where my little pry bar is. But I can't get it out with the pry bar I'm using with that bolt still in there. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that for right now. I might run all those in and see if they sell those sockets. I don't know if they do or not. I should probably pop the plug off for the torque converter bolts. See what kind of bolts those are. <laughs> Alright guys, I don't know if you make that out, it's kind of really white from my light. There we go. <clears throat> it's actually just a nut. That's a 15 millimeter. I'm going to try to use my electric ratchet to get up in there and hopefully break it loose. That definitely won't break it loose. So I'm about to use a regular ratchet to break it loose and I can unscrew it the rest of the way with the electric ratchet. Sorry if you hear my creeper squeaking. It's annoying for me, but not just annoying for you guys also. I try to cut most of it out. Oh, this is really tight. Kind of a pain to do on video, so I'm gonna. I'll do this one on video, then I'll do the other ones. I think there's five more after this one. I'll do the rest of them off video. Oh shit. Well, I dropped it down in the bell housing at least it wasn't 
while I was rebuilding it. So hopefully it don't happen when I'm trying to put it back together. Oh well, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them, then I'll continue with the other one stuff. All right, guys, I got all six of the nuts off. Um, just in case you don't know how many bolts there are for sure, or nuts, whatever there is on the vehicle you're working on, whenever you get a turn it. I don't know if you can hear that, but that was the torque converter hitting the flex plate because it's loose now. Or if you don't have studs coming through, then you'll see the flex plate. It'll turn and your torque converter will stay still. Alright, so next I'm going to try to see if I can get lucky with these nuts for the exhaust. I highly doubt it, but we're going to give her a shot see what happens. Alright, so I don't know how easy it's going to be one-handed, but we're going to try to do one on video. This is a 13 millimeter socket. Alright, so I got all four of the nuts off here. One, two, there's one on this corner and one on that corner. This one was kind of a pain. Luckily, I had a flex head ratchet and I put the socket on here, put the handle up towards the top of the engine, and that's where I was able to break it loose at. The rest of these I did from down here. I was able to break them all loose surprisingly and I use my battery powered ratchet to zip them off there that top corner up here I had to use a regular ratchet the whole time because the battery powered ratchet wouldn't fit so that's the exhaust now should be able to pull it apart just like that then she should be out of your way so now, move on to the next thing. All right, next thing I'm gonna work on is I'm gonna go and get some of these bell housing bolts out. There's one here. Let me. There we go. There's one there. There. Okay, so it looks like the starter bolts do have to come out. Because it looks like it goes all the way through. One big long one. So that's one, two, three, four. You can see it sticking out there. Go on the other side of this bracket. And right below the axle is your fifth one. Now you're still going to have a couple of them up top. As you can see right there's one. There's probably a couple more along the top. So it's not going to separate on you. But I'm going to go ahead and do that while I'm down here. When we got those broke loose and took it out. Then I'll move on to the next thing. Alright guys, so I got all the bolts loose. There's this one. That one, that one, those ones were uh, 16 millimeter. Then this one back here, that one's an 18 millimeter. Then your starter bolt here, it has this bracket that goes over top of it first. 
So you gotta take that off. And that one was a. There's a little nut for it. That one was a 13 millimeter. Then the bolt itself. That's an 18 millimeter. Now this one with this power string line in the way. I use these long reach flex head ratchet wrenches. Made it pretty easy, but it's still kind of a pain. I tried to use a ratchet, but this sensor connector right here was in the way. So if that's all you have to work with is a ratchet. Go ahead and unplug that and maybe take the sensor out if possible. This way you don't break anything. I'm just going to slide the starter bolt out a little bit because... I ain't taking the starter out, it's just gonna, I'm just trying to get it out of the engine, the bolt. So I think, besides the power steering and the AC, I gotta do the power steering first, before I do the AC. I think that's everything down here except draining the coolant, which I'm gonna do that one completely down underneath because I don't want that dripping all over me. So I'm going to go ahead and look up those sockets, see if Advance or Autozone has them. And one thing I do want to mention is you really should wear safety glasses, especially on older vehicles. I had all kinds of rust fall in my eyes and stuff like that, dirt, grime, but that Pretty much wraps everything up underneath. Seemed pretty simple so far. Like I said, I just gotta do the power steering pump and the AC compressor. Then that should wrap up everything underneath. So whenever I get the sockets, I'll show you guys what they look like and stuff like that. All right, guys, I went to Advance Auto, and they had this uh, bit set here. Triple square, as you can see right there, 12 point, they're metric, half inch, lifetime warranty, uh, they were 13 bucks, here's what they look like. And the power steering pump pulley is a M10. Just in case you guys just want to buy one bit or whatever if you're able to. So that's what that is. I'm going to go ahead and get underneath the car and I'll get to taking the pulley off. Alright, so again, here's the pulley here. And the bit fits there nice and tight. Got plenty of room. I thought I was going to cut it down, but surprisingly, I don't have to. Then, if you get the same set as I got, it's actually a 13 millimeter. So I'm going to use my long reach. 13 millimeter flex head. That's why I got plenty of leverage. Alright, this might be tricky while holding a camera. We'll set you down, hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Tight. All right, so what I did here is those little slits in the pulley. I 
poked a screwdriver through the back of it and then let it rest up against the oil pan and I was able to break them all loose so now you just twist them out of there Okay, so there's that bolt I was having trouble with. As you can see, I had it all the way unthreaded, but it must have just been catching just enough to mess it up. So now let's see if I can pry this pump out of here. Okay, well before you pry the pump out there, you might want to get all the bolts out. Looks like I missed one right there. Okay, so it looks like that's kind of triangle shaped. So you might want to make sure it's turned towards a more flat spot to get your bolt out. <laughs> Look at that. Don't even need pride anymore. It's amazing what happens when you get all the bolts out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this out of the way. Alright, so I wedged the pump up by the radiator hose. And as you can see here, I put a cap on the where the <coughs> hose goes from the reservoir. Then I also shoved a cap into the reservoir hose. I have a box full of different size caps and plugs. Anytime I have a new engine, they come with caps and stuff like that. So I just always keep them for jobs like this. So this way I don't make it such a big mess. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to tackle is the AC compressor, which looks like this bolt right here is also a triple square. So I'm going to plug that sensor there, this way I don't break it, and there's one there. One there. Imagine one up on top. Yep, so there's seems like three of them holding it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those loose and hooking out. And I'm going to guess that they're also at N10 triple square. Yes, they are. M10. All right, got the AC compressor out. As you can see, it's dangling. That connector, I just shoved a screwdriver up in. And there's a little tab here. I pressed it away from the connector, and it released it. Popped right up. And then. Here's the three bolts. Again, those are the M10 triple square bits. I did one at a time. Then the last one, of course, was had all the weight of the compressor on there, so I just wiggled it with my other hand and took it out. After you break them free, they spun out pretty easy. At least on this one. So, I'm hoping that this is going to be all the way since 
I'm pulling the engine up. Hopefully I don't cause any problems with just dangling. I'd rather the customer not have to buy more free on. But if it comes down to it, it is what it is. Alright, so I think the only thing left down here is to drain the coolant. I'm going to go over everything real quick, make sure I got it all. Because like I said before, I don't really want to have coolant dripping all over me. Alright guys, I got everything underneath done, I do believe. I don't see anything else. I'm sure I probably forgot something. But now I'm going to do disconnect the bottom radiator hose which goes right here on the engine it's right behind the alternator uh your top radiator hose goes over here to this t but you're gonna want to do the bottom so i'm gonna do it there then i'm gonna drop it down in that bucket now if you guys are tight on money it won't hurt to reuse your coolant I'm not going to. I'm just going to put it in this dirty bucket. The only way it's not okay is if A. It's contaminated. It looks bad. Or the wrong antifreeze. Or B. You blew a head gasket maybe and you got oil in your coolant which I guess that'd be contaminated still. But this one does look good. As you can see it's nice and pink but the customer is just going to buy new so might as well go ahead and put fresh in it check out my phone holder I made it slides well as long as it don't come out pretty ugly but it's a lot more sturdier than this little thing. I have a big phone and it kind of pushes it to its limits. So I decided to make one. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and try to set you guys up so you can watch me drain the coolant. Alright, got the Clamp slid back, the hose broke free. Now remember, when you go do this, there's gonna be coolant come out of the hose and the engine block. Well, it might not be very much. Looks like thermostats right there. Depending on what vehicle you have, I guess. So, I'm gonna go ahead and scoot the bucket over some more. I don't really want to make a huge mess on my garage floor. Alright, so I'm going to let that drain for a couple seconds. Um, I blew in the coolant reservoir there to help get most of it out. I don't know if you guys ever seen these, but they're hose clamp pliers. They ratchet so you can click it and it stays in place. Then these little ears are, or teeth, I guess, you call them, go around the ears of a hose clamp. Let me release them real quick. So you just put it on there like that, squeeze it. And then it ratchets it ratchets and locks in place and you can slide it wherever you want. Pretty nifty. I think they were a little over hundred hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Um I was gonna use them on this, but the dipstick tube was in the way. And I gotta be careful with it because the one on the new engine going in it looks like it got broke during shipping 
so I gotta gently get the other one off. There's a little better picture of the top radiator hose where it goes. See, it looks like thermostat right there. But yeah, there's everything's drained out of it now. The oil, coolant, and power steering fluid. Probably gonna pull this power steering line up. So I get the reservoir all the way. I'll do that here in a minute. All right, now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move this bucket, put my oil drain pan under the hose. This way, if any more drips out, I don't make a any bigger mess. Then I'm gonna go ahead and set the car down. So I'll get you guys caught up when I'm done with all that. All right, so I got it dropped back down on the ground. I put the drain pan down there. black so it's kind of hard to see it down there but the radiator hose is going into it and it's underneath the thermostat housing so this way i don't make a mess all right so now i'm gonna go ahead and start removing a bunch of stuff i guess i'm gonna do the air breather overflow tube Take it off the throttle body up here. Unplug any sensors I can see. Gotta get the tensioner off, the alternator off. Um, yeah, not too much, I guess. The top radiator hose. Looks like you just take it off here the rest of it stays on the engine now I'm going to guess that this T right here is going to be brittle so be careful with that when you go pinching it to break the hose loose don't squeeze too hard you can shatter it but I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up and do a little time lapse then I'll I do a recap of all I've done.
All right, guys, I got everything unhooked, disconnected, removed. I don't know any other words. <laughs> um, the only thing I got left is the engine mount here. Then I have one bolt here for the bell housing and one bolt right down on here for the bell housing underneath all this junk. There's a lot of coolant hoses. You got some going on the transmission, which I have never seen before. You got an oil cooler on it, which I've only seen on diesels and turbo engines. Then I was fighting with the these heater core hoses here let me turn the light on you kind of see it so there's this one that's the top one and there's one right below it one right below it there this one down here i kept fighting with it i noticed that Back in there, that's all plastic. So I didn't want to break those. Then I happened to glance down at the bottom one. And they take clips. As you can see the metal clips still on that one. Those clips right there. I'll be careful when you take those off because I was taking it off there and it ended up over here on the floor. Uh, it's not unusual to see the clips. I've seen them before. Um, the tensioner. Oh, Let me tell you about the tensioner real quick. I'm kind of nervous to be over here around it, honestly. Alright, so there's a pen. And it's fully tensioned right now, so this, it's got a bunch of tension on it. As you can see, that pin is diagonal. Like, it could slip out at any point, and that's going to fling real hard. But, as you can see, that's the only way you can get to all three bolts. And that is the only pen that I could find. I got picks and stuff, but they're too long to go in there. Because of the side of the frame here. So, I highly recommend to find a thicker pen. I'm gonna say something like this, the end of it here. But it's also gotta be short to, like I said, fit in there where the frame is. And the tensioner has to be fully, I can't think of the word, fully tensioned, I guess, in order to get the bottom rate or not radiator, the bottom alternator boy out. So I had a hell of a time with all that. But it's all good to go. Um, I did unplug the injectors all the way down through there. It would probably been a lot easier to take the intake off. But I don't want to have to get a gasket for the other one. It won't be a huge deal, but... Well, I spend more money than I have to. Um, well, I think that's about it for today. Tomorrow after I get off work, I'm going to throw a jack under the engine, rip this mount out, then take those two bell housing bolts out of top, then Prior apart. 
I don't think I forgot anything. But I guess tomorrow will tell. <laughs> I say that and right here's a hose. Oh yeah, the fuel hose. The fuel line. I was trying to take this clamp off right here. But then I ended up tracing it back because it wasn't spreading far enough to release it. I traced it back to this. That was down there like that. What you do with these is you press down, and then you pull up on this black thing and it releases it, and then you pull up. So that's pretty cool. Well, this hose I forgot has a little white clip. You push down, and then you press this aside of it in, and then you pull it. I should probably go ahead and undo that before I forget it tomorrow and rip it. What I like to do is whatever stays on the engine, I tuck it into the engine. Then wherever stays in the car, I like to tuck it over to the side all the way. So as you can see, everything's kind of, except that cluster of hoses there, where everything's pretty much out of the way. All right, well. I think that's about a wrap for today. Like I said, I'll get it pulled out tomorrow. Set it beside this one, and then I gotta transfer some stuff. And then remove some cut hoses and that dipstick tube. And kind of give it a look over, make sure there's nothing else broken or missing. Uh, when you're when you get a junkyard engine. And there's a bunch of extra parts, like sensors, there's a sensor back there, coil pack, oil temperature sensor I'd imagine, another sensor, but try not to break anything in the car, because for one, you could break something on this engine as you're putting it in, you have to replace it, or for two, the sensor could be bad. So, kind of save you a little bit of money there. Uh, if you break any clips, you can always go to these ones that come on the engine and then just pull the pins out. Make sure you keep track of your order. And then repin it. I'll go over that a little bit tomorrow. Alright, well you guys have a good one. If you got any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. If you would, like, subscribe. Also, you can comment and let me know I can work on my videos. I'll try making a little bit better. Alright, you guys have a good one.